Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. It's great to be in worship with you this Sunday morning. Would you please stand with us and let's start our new year rejoicing in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's sing Wonderful Grace of Jesus, number 338 in Sean's hymnal. <laughs> Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall his grace begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free. For the wonderful grace of Matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountains, darkly like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgression, sing it, greater love than all my sin to change, my sin to change, oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching to all the lost. By it we have been pardoned, saved to the uttermost. Chains have been torn asunder, giving me liberty. For the wonderful grace of Jesus. than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountains, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, broader than the scope of my transgression, singing, greater far than all my sin, and take my sin, and take, oh, magnify the precious Most divine, by its transforming power, making him God's dear child, purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Though the matchless grace of Jesus. Deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountains, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Farther than the scope of my transgression, greater far than all my sin and shame. praise and thanks this morning. Take a moment while you're standing. Welcome each other, then we'll continue in song.
the wise man books in his wisdom, or the strong man books in his strength, and that the rich man books in his riches, but the humble come and give thanks to the one who made us, the one who saved us. I will boast in the Lord my God. I will boast in the one. God, thanks again this morning. Father God, we do praise you. We do make our boast in you. Your word tells us over and over again not to boast in the things of the world or the things that we can achieve, Lord, but to boast in the work, in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And thank you that you sent him through your infinite love. You allowed him to come as a child and then to grow up sinless, to pour out his life for all of us, Lord. Help us to find that same love within us and share that with the world. We praise you this morning. You choose the humble and raise them high. You choose the weak and make them strong. You heal our brokenness inside and give us life. The same love that set the captives free, the same love that opened eyes to see.
And Father, what an awesome promise that is. That every single one of us in this room, that you are calling us by name, that you are saying that we are yours and that you love us and that your Holy Spirit pursues us each day. So Lord, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. And thank you for the assurances that the power that raised your son from the grave is working within us, working out for our good, but for your glory. So Father, thank you for calling us by name. Thank you for calling us your most magnificent creation. May our lives bring you and you a glory, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to every one of you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you. Want to do a couple of reminders to us today. Today is the first Sunday of the month, first Sunday of 22. This afternoon at 4 o'clock, the elders are going to be meeting. If you have a desire to um, make fellowship your home, maybe call yourself a, a member of Fellowship Church. I want to invite you to please join the elders in room 107, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Also, if you want to make professional faith or perhaps have your child baptized, that's a wonderful time to meet with the elders and, uh, and bring those to the Lord. Hey, we got an awesome God. We really do. He is faithful. He is true, and His Word is true for us today. Will you spend some time with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we want to pause once again this morning to say thank you for who you are. Thank you for the assurance that we have today through your Holy Spirit that everything that we do here in this room is intended to bring you glory. So Lord, as we all begin a brand new year, as we have made the decision to come and join and, and do fellowship together this morning, whether here in person or perhaps online, Lord, we know that your Spirit is with us, and we know that your Spirit is opening our eyes and opening our ears and softening our hearts to the only truth this world has ever known. So Lord, we begin a new year to say thank you for the old. Thank you for the lessons, the life, the promises that were provided for. But Lord, with great enthusiasm, we look into 22. Not for what we can do, Father, but what you can do through us. So Lord, help us to be your witnesses to this world. We begin by saying, help us to be witnesses for what grace and forgiveness has done in our homes, in our communities, in our place of work, perhaps, maybe our schools. Lord, you have called us by your Spirit to be your witnesses to the ends of the earth. Help us to do that again this year in 2022. Father, we also want to say thank you for the opportunity to be a witness in perhaps areas in life where, where we would not sign up for ourselves. Specifically, an opportunity to be a witness for who you are in, in time of suffering, in time of loss, in time of uh, being a part of our, our loved ones. Lord, every single week we have a yellow sheet in, in our laps. Some of us recognize the majority of the names, others perhaps, maybe we don't. We're not able to put a face with a name. But Lord, we know that there are many within our congregation, within our faith family that are, that are suffering right now. Suffering from, from illness. Suffering from a broken heart. Suffering from being alone. Lord, you have the opportunity, we have the opportunity to suffer knowing that you are with us. To heal knowing that you can heal. So Lord, for every one of the names that we are going to go over this morning, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be with them and remind them of their awesome, unique opportunities to be a witness to you. Specifically, Father, for Hannah this week and Dick and Corey as they will be undergoing procedures. Lord, may every person that comes into the room this week know that there's something different about these individuals. But not only these three individuals, they're, they're loved ones who will, will be there with them, encouraging and loving them. May they be a witness. May they, the way they treat the staff at the hospitals may be different. Set them apart, Father. May the words that come out of their mouth bring life. 
Father, we also ask for your, your healing hand upon, upon Paul and, and Scott and Jan, Roger, Sally, Tom, Deb, and Laylee. Father, they have all gone through a procedure in the last week, and, and they are trusting in you. They are expecting recovery. And Father, we pray that you bless them with that. But along the, the healing road, Father, give them patience. Help them to, to take one day at a time. Remind them to breathe. Remind them that, that they are not alone, that they have a faith family, fellowship church that is praying them through. And Father, for the participants that are going to Atlanta, Georgia, they're on their way right now to begin 2022 with the desire to know you more, to have a deeper passion, to live for you, to love you, to serve you, to be your witnesses in this world. So for the students and for the leaders, Father, we say thank you for their soft hearts and a desire to know you more. May their passion come back here. And may they influence us. May they encourage us. May they may tool us up as a congregation to be who you've called us to be. And Father, for many of the high school, middle school, and, and elementary students that will be going back to school this week after a nice, well-deserved break, Father, we do pray for safety within the schools. We pray for the ability for the students to wake up and, and, and focus once again in the classroom to do their very best as they are examples of who you are. And Father, may we never take it for granted. May we never underestimate the the importance of opening up the Word together. In a few moments, Father, as we do, as we open the only truth this world has ever known, we ask again through your Spirit, open our eyes, open our ears, and soften our hearts to the words that you have put upon Pastor Sean's heart to share with us today. Father, you are good, and you are doing amazing things in all of our lives. Help us to see that even clearer than we did before. Fill this place with your Holy Spirit. Give us confidence, Father. Allow us to trust you in all things. And Father, we want to begin again by saying thank you for another year. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the light it is in this community. Lord, together, help us all keep that fire burning bright as the light, it's not us but it is your Son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, may everything that we do bring Him, make Him known. We pray this in the only name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, I want to invite our kids to come forward for a children's message. As they're doing so, a couple of reminders. Uh, if you are new with us, there's blue cards in front of you. I want to just encourage you to jot down your name, maybe some contact information. If you'd like to share that with us, we'd love to be in touch with you. Also, at the same time, there's those black friendship pads on the outside aisles. Please sign that and pass that down as well. Kids, come on forward, please. Otherwise, it's going to be the Halston Hall Show. Hey. Girls, if you want to come forward at this time, wherever you are, we will wait for you. Moms and dads, a reminder, children in worship is still on recess. It's on break uh, yet this Sunday, but children in worship and Sunday school uh, will be back next week, Sunday. And, uh, and this week, Wednesday, we will already begin our uh, Wednesday night family night together. So please make note of that. All right. This is going to be us. You have to be nice and loud on the count of three. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, you want to come over here? Because I want to show you something. Can you come over here? Right over this way? All right. Now, once you have a seat, so those behind you can see. Okay, can you sit down right there? What is, what is this right here? What does this look like? Say it loud. Toothpaste. toothpaste. How many of you use toothpaste? All right, not all of you. All right. Now, how much toothpaste does it take to brush your teeth? How much do mom and dad let you have? Just a little? 
or a lot? Just a little. How many of you have ever wondered how much toothpaste is in a tube? Have you ever wondered that? A bunch. Is there a bunch in here? A thousand. You think there's a thousand? Would you help me this morning? Can you help me? All right. Why don't you come right here on your knees with me? And uh, I'm going to take the cap off of this, okay? And I'm wondering if, if you can squeeze that toothpaste into the bowl, okay? Yep, oh, that's looking good. You just squeeze all that toothpaste out of there. Have you ever done this at home before? No, no, and you shouldn't, okay? Only at church, let's see, is there still more in there? Oh, keep squeezing, keep squeezing. Let me see, Let, let's see if there's, you ever roll it up like that on the end? No. Neither do my boys. They just, okay, let's keep squeezing. Keep squeezing. Oh, there's more. There's more. Let's keep going. Oh, look at that. Let's keep going. A little more. A little more. Oh, look at all that toothpaste. Doesn't that look delicious? No. All right, all right. Can you, look at that. Can you see all the toothpaste? Can you see it all? Can you see it in there? Can you see that? Look at that. Was that fun to squeeze all that out of there? It was. Okay. Now I need to use this for the second service, so can you put it back in there? Okay. I just I need the toothpaste back in the tube there. And we'll wait for you, okay? Oh, is is that working? No. You're gonna be able to get it back in there? No. You know what? You're absolutely right. Once the toothpaste is out of the tube, you can't put it back. Say that with me. You can't put it back. Okay, what's this called right here? Your, well, your mouth. And what do we do with our mouths? We, we talk, okay? Now, you can, do, you can do two things with your mouth. You can say things that are mean. You can say things that hurt people and you can say things that are not kind. Or, with your mouth, you can say things that are kind, you can say things that are encouraging, and you can tell people about who? Who? About God. You can tell people about Jesus. So, like this, like this toothpaste here, once, once it's out of the tube, you can't take it back. Just like your mouth. Once you say something that's mean, you can't take it back. So let's make sure that what we say is kind and encouraging, and most importantly, we tell people all about Jesus. Say his name with me, all about, all about Jesus. Jesus. All hands folded, eyes closed, every head bowed. Father God, thank you for the gift of our mouths, for the opportunity to speak and to talk and to sing. Help us to choose our words carefully. Help us to say things that build up and encourage other people, but most importantly, help us to use our mouths and our words to tell people all about Jesus. We pray it all in his name, as all God's children say, amen. amen. Thank you. You can go back to your seats. As we prepare our hearts for God's word this morning, you can remain seated and... Uh... Let the words of this song minister to you, then I'll ask you to stand later and sing with us. Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name? Would dare to be on my earth. Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for oh, my ever wandering heart? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done. Because of who you are
We are his, we are his people, we are his sheep, we belong to our faithful Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen? And so we turn to the word of God to learn more about him and more about our relationship with him. Two addresses in scripture this morning, Luke chapter 24, that's the very end of the gospel of Luke, Luke 24, and then also the book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 1. A few verses from there, verses 6 through 11. If you're joining us from home uh, this morning, maybe because of the snow, or maybe you're traveling and you're on vacation, uh, you can go to our homepage, click on resources there. You'll find a bulletin. That'll have the, the scriptural notations in it as well. A brand new year, an opportunity to, to share with you something that the Lord uh, has laid on my heart for all of us as we are his. Before we go any further, let's pray together. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. We are not to walk in here sour-faced or downcast, because that is not of you, from you, or for you. That is not of your Spirit, but we are the people of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so may it be with heart and soul and mind and strength. May it be with all we possess by your goodness and grace that we dive now into the truth of your word. May it be what we hear. May it be what we understand. And in loving obedience, may it be what we do until you faithfully call us home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wonder how many of you have ever been invited to someone's house. 
You've been invited to someone's house and you're not exactly sure why you're there. It, it looks like a party. It looks like a celebration. It's a gathering of individuals. Some of them you recognize. Some of them you're meeting for the very first time. And for those opening minutes, there is some food and some refreshments. There is some light conversation as you try to mill around and about the room, trying to figure out why you are there, trying to figure out why some of these other people are, are there. And then all of a sudden, here appears your host. Here he is. And he kind of makes his way into the crowd, kind of makes his way into the center of the room. And now everyone's eyes are on him. And uninterrupted and tireless for the next hour, he launches into a presentation in regards to his life. It's going in a different direction. It's going in a new direction direction and he wants to share this experience with you and with everyone gathered that night. Never before has he been at this place in life. He's had numerous jobs. His career has shifted. He has often found himself in financial stress and anxiety. But now, he has found, he has stumbled upon a program. He has stumbled upon a product and it has changed absolutely everything. What is he doing? What is the program? What is the product? What has been so revolutionary in his life? He has found for himself a, a collection of supplements and soaps that he personally uses and that he has been marketing to both his family and his friends. And now with this tremendous building optimism, he insists that he has never felt better. He has never been so happy. He never before has awakened in the morning with such an optimistic disposition to, to seize the day. Never before has life been so seemingly lucrative. The use and sale of these products has transformed, say that with me, it has transformed his life. And that's why you're there. That's why this oddball collection of friends and family are in the room. His life has been transformed and he has scheduled this party to tell his story and to invite everyone there to step into and to seize this opportunity to have their life transformed as well through the use, through the marketing, through the networking sales of these supplements and soaps. And many people signed on the bottom line that night. His story was so convincing. His optimism was so contagious. The transformation was so noticeably different. Many people signed on the bottom line. Why is that? Why is it that we are able to invite family and friends without hesitation into our homes? Why is it that, that we will set up in front of them this opportunity to sell supplements and soaps or spices or candles or baskets or insurance or annuities? Why is it that we will invite family and friends, those we've known the longest, we'll invite them into our homes and we have absolutely no problem tenaciously telling our story and inviting them to sign on the bottom line. But what happens when 
when the treasure we raise up in front of them is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Why do we hesitate to invite our family and our friends into our homes? Why is there not the same tenaciousness? Why is there not the same optimism? Why are we not sharing a story of transformation and inviting them to, by faith, have the very same? Here is the problem. Too many Christians are looking at the idea of telling the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Too many Christians look at the call and the charge of sharing Christ with family and friends, and they say, you know what? If that is the work that I'm called to, then I'm going to file for unemployment. If that is the work that Jesus is calling me to, then I am going to file for unemployment because I can't do that. I won't do that. I don't know how to do that. I'm afraid of doing that. Whatever the reason is, there are too many Christians who are filing unemployment when it comes to the most important charge, the most important commission, and the most important work that we have ever been called to. And lives are on the line. And those lives are chasing after all of this treasure that the world purportedly dangles in front of them. Know this this morning. Jesus denies every one of those unemployment claims. I want an amen. Amen? Jesus denies every one of those unemployment claims. It is unacceptable for any Christian to say no to sharing the treasure of trusting Christ as your Savior and your Lord. Jesus talks about it as he's preparing for his ascension into heaven. I'm going to begin reading at Luke 24, and uh, I'm going to immediately move into Acts chapter 1. Luke 24, beginning at verse 44, Jesus is speaking. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, And that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning, say that with me, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things, and behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. The same experience is is here covered again in Acts chapter 1. We begin reading at verse 6. Again, the ascension is about to occur. So when they'd come together, they asked him, they asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, And said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. 
Jesus Christ has set before us the most important work we will ever do. Jesus Christ has commissioned every single one of our lives. Jesus Christ has charged us as his disciples to now make disciples. Are we clear on that, church? Amen? But it's time for us to stop simply saying, Amen. It's time for us to stop only agreeing with Scripture. It's time for us to lovingly, obediently do what it calls us to do. Can you agree and say amen to that? Amen. So this is a brand new year. We're not going to worry about the past because that can't change anything. But in this brand new year on the first Sunday of 2022, we are called again to make disciples of our family and our friends tenaciously and optimistically. And it always must begin, first of all, with Scripture. Say that with me, with Scripture. Now, it's probably easier to invite someone to a church service. It's probably easier to invite someone to a program or to a class. It's probably easier to invite someone to a roller skating party or to a Wednesday evening meal. That's a relatively easy thing to do. But we're not told to start with those things. We must begin with Scripture, and we begin with Scripture because Jesus begins with Scripture. Back in Luke 24 at verse 44, then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me and the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the what? The scriptures. This is what Jesus wants. Jesus wants other people to know. He wants other people to understand. He wants other people to love. And he wants other people to believe what the scriptures say. But first of all, we have to know and understand and love and believe what scripture has to say. I love what Jesus does here. Jesus affirms the entirety of the Old Testament. Did you listen? It says that Jesus spoke to them about the law of Moses. He spoke to them about the prophets. He spoke to them about the Psalms. What does Jesus do here? He affirms what we know to be the Old Testament. There are some pastors right now who will tell you that the Old Testament is irrelevant, that the Old Testament has nothing more to say about our lives. But you see, Jesus affirms the Old Testament. Jesus affirms the scriptures. And that's why we love the old and the new. We love the old because it speaks of the one who is to come. We love the new because it tells us all about Jesus. Amen, church? You see, we need to know, we need to understand, we need to love, we need to believe unashamedly what the full scriptures have to say. And as Jesus is speaking with his disciples, he opens up their minds. He opens up their minds to, to understand what God is saying through his word. Now, most everyone here has a Bible. Most everyone here has a Bible app. You can pull it up at any time. You can read it at, at any point in time. But how many of us know and also understand? How many of us can, can make our way from Genesis to Revelation? How many of us understand the context of Scripture, understand the function of Scripture, can go from one point to, to another point? You see, this is where we need to begin. If we're going to tell people about Jesus, if, if we're going to be tenaciously engaged in making disciples, we have to know and understand and love and believe what Scripture has to say. So it's a brand new year. This is a fresh start. This is a new opportunity. I want to know what you're going to do to, to grow in your knowledge and understanding of Scripture this year. Now, for some of you, I want to challenge you. Uh, it, it might be time for a new Bible. The Scripture hasn't changed. The Word of God doesn't have to change. But, but maybe purchasing something that has the additional footnotes. How many of you read the, the footnotes when you're reading a book? Uh, 
in college, you know, I always skipped those, and there was always a professor here or there who would ask a question based on the footnotes. I always figured if it's that important, put it up in the, in the copy, right? You know, there are a lot of folks far, far smarter than me who, who study the word of God, who study the context, who study the history, and who help to put it all together. And maybe this is the year that you're going to buy a study Bible because as you're reading through, there's all these wonderful additional notes and commentary on every single page. I'm going to challenge you. It's one of the most important investments you will ever make because you can share it with others. Maybe for you, this is the year that you're gonna get online and you're gonna pull up the Bible Project. We at times have shared with you video from the Bible Project before. It takes every single book in the Bible and, and it breaks it out in picture and in written form. And, and it tells you what it means and how that book is moving and how that book fits into the context of the rest of scripture. Maybe this is the year where every single week you're going to watch one of those videos and you're going to watch it repeatedly, locking into your mind what scripture has to say. Number one, we must begin with, with what we know and understand and love and believe with scripture because we can't tell anybody else what it says until we, first of all, know what it says. Amen, church? From Scripture, we, we move on, and uh, we are called to share of our suffering Savior. Say that with me, our suffering Savior. How many of you have ever been introduced to someone? Okay, hopefully all of your hands are up. Otherwise, you're living in a basement, right? All right. We, we've all been introduced to someone. How many of you have ever been introduced to someone, and immediately you turn and say, what's their name? right? You forget it just like that. Um, I've been introduced to a lot of people over the years. Some introductions are very simple. It's just a name. Some introductions are, are more flowery. Some introductions are funny. Some introductions are just plain strange. But here's the question. How would you introduce Jesus to someone? You have an opportunity to introduce Jesus to someone for the very first time. How would you introduce him? Would you be able to introduce him as your, again, number two, suffering Savior? Now, where does that come from? Luke 24 at verse 46, it says, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. How do you introduce your suffering Savior. Well, you see, if you're going to introduce the most important relationship in your life, then you have to refer to him as your. He's yours. He's your what? Suffering. Say it with me. Suffering. Well, what did he suffer? He never did anything wrong. He lived a completely perfect life. He is very God of very God. Attacks were brought against him. He never brought attacks against others. What did he suffer for? He suffered for me and for my sin and my addiction and my brokenness. Every wrong thing I have ever said, every wrong thing I have ever done, every wrong thing I have ever thought. Can anybody here join me in that by a show of hands? Anybody here ever sinned before? Or some of you aren't even sure of that. I'll answer the question for you. You have, okay? For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. How do you introduce Jesus? You have to be able to introduce him as your suffering Savior. Why is anybody else going to care about the introduction? Why is anybody else going to remember his name? Why is anybody else going to care unless you introduce Jesus honestly? as your suffering Savior. 
who has made all the difference. You see, there's, there's a little something in West Michigan that, that we call West Michigan pride. We care about how we look. We care about our reputation. We care about our image. We care about what we drive and where we live and where we work. We care about how well our sons and daughters play on the field. We care about how they perform in the classroom. We, pr we care about where they go to college or university if they study further. There's a certain thing called West Michigan pride. And that West Michigan pride seeks to hide everything that's ugly and sinful. And quite honestly, folks, it stalls out our introduction of Jesus as our suffering Savior. I'm wondering how many of us in this brand new year are finally going to be willing to, to share honestly with another person about those places and those things and those experiences and those struggles and those temptations that still come against us every day. No one's going to care about the introduction of, of the suffering Savior until they know it's the introduction of, of your, my, our suffering Savior. Amen, church? Amen. It's time to kill the pride in 2022 and focus on the glory of God that is in Christ Jesus for the good of our lives. It begins with Scripture, knowing it, knowing what it says. Number two, introducing our suffering Savior. Number three, we are specifically sent. Say that with me. We are specifically sent to proclaim the gospel and to make disciples. Now, where does that idea come from? Luke 24, down at verse uh, 47, it, it says there that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from where, church? Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And then in Acts chapter 1 at verse 8 says something of the same nature. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Here's one of the reasons why I love Fellowship Reformed Church, because Fellowship has always been passionate about making disciples. Fellowship has always been passionate about reaching folks on a global scale. And internationally, we partner and we go as far as we need to go. We reach as far as God wants us to reach. We also make disciples on a national level, from Atlantic to Pacific and from North to South. We are engaged on a national scale scale with partners, with ministries, responding to needs within the United States of America. But what about the house you drove by coming in off of Port Sheldon this morning? What about the house that you, that you drive past as you come in off of the south entrance of, of 36th? Or, or what about right over here, the north entrance of, of 36th? Who lives in, in the old parsonage of Fellowship Reformed Church? It's important for us to reach internationally. It's important for us to reach nationally. But what about the people who are living next door? You see... Scripture tells us that we're going to go to the end of the earth. Yes, we're going to hit Samaria. Yes, we're going to hit Judea. But where does it all begin? Where did it begin, church? In the city of Jerusalem. That's right where they were. That was home base. We are specifically sent to begin making disciples at home. our family, our friends, the people that we claim are the closest in our lives. 
What are we doing here at home? In Hudsonville, in Jenison, in Allendale, and Granville, in Jamestown, in Zealand. Christians are the minority population in Ottawa County. Did you know that? What are Christians in Ottawa County? The 39% of Ottawa County says it has a personal relationship with Christ as Savior and Lord. I'm going to test your math. If 39% are for Christ, how many of them are not walking with Christ? 61. Thank you for telling me. You're quicker than me. 61% of the population of Ottawa County does not trust Christ or follow Christ as Savior and Lord. We are specifically sent to make a difference here and now. That's one of the reasons this year why I'm asking Pastor Brent and our outreach and mission team to put together a home team. And I wonder how many folks here are going to be willing to play or participate on the home team. I wonder how many people here are going to be a part of the home team that intentionally, tenaciously, optimistically, and in an encouraging manner reaches the 61%. Because if you're here this morning and you don't care about the 61%, I'm going to encourage you to go home and pray. Jesus so cared about the world that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. He, he sent the most costly and expensive of all gifts and treasures, his son who would shed his blood. Can we honestly sit here this morning and not be moved by a population of 61%? Does that not move your heart? Amen, church? The rest of you, amen, church? If that doesn't move you, if that doesn't move me, then church, we have to take a look at our faith and our commitment to Christ. It must begin with Scripture. Sharing not of the suffering servant, but introducing people to our suffering Savior. Specifically sent, making a difference here at home. Number four, it must be Spirit-driven. Say that with me. Spirit driven. You see, a number of us never even start because we're saying, I don't know how to do this. What if somebody asks me a question and, and I don't know the answer? Just the thought of it makes your hands sweat. You get all clammy. You're saying, you know what? Other people are better at that than I am. I don't have to do it. And yet Jesus has told every one of his disciples to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe and obey everything that he has commanded us. You see, this is not a some are in and some opt out. Remember, there's no unemployment claims that are accepted here. This is an every one in effort. And it's time for us to stop making excuses and it's time for us to stop expecting other people to do it. And it's time for every one of us to accept our responsibility because you have the power of the Holy, what? Holy Spirit. Where does he live? In your heart. And who sent him to you? The Father. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. Again, in Acts 1 at verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Let me ask you a question. Is the Holy Spirit powerful? Is the Holy Spirit God? Is the Holy Spirit active and alive? Does the Holy Spirit live in you? Is the Holy Spirit on the move? Are you moving with him? 
hovering over the waters at creation, the Holy Spirit. Speaking through the prophets, the Holy Spirit. Miraculously bringing conception to the Virgin Mary, the Holy Spirit. Alighting like a dove upon Jesus at his baptism, the Holy Spirit. Raising a dead physical body of Jesus on the third day back to life, the power of the Holy Spirit. And promised by Jesus upon and into the life of every one of his disciples, the Holy who? The Holy Spirit. It's time for us to stop making excuses. It's time for us to stop saying somebody else is better, somebody else is different, somebody else is able to do that. You know what? The Holy Spirit that is in that woman, the Holy Spirit that is in that man is the same Holy Spirit that is in you. And that is a gift from your Father in heaven who loves you so much and who desires to work through you to reach that other person he so loves. We start with Scripture. We introduce our, my suffering Savior. We are specifically sent. It must begin at home. Yes, nationally. Yes, internationally. But it must begin at home. It is spirit-driven. Now, we're going to close here. Sorry. Well, you know what? Actually, I'm not sorry. What else do you have to do today? It is good when God's people gather in his house to worship and praise him. Amen? Amen. And if you've got beef in the oven already, you started too soon. You know what? There's, there's one thing that's really going to get in the way, and there's one thing that's really going to stall all of this out. Finally, fifthly, lastly, selfishness. Say that with me. Selfishness. For, for too long, it has been acceptable to maintain the church. How did we get to 39%? So many places raise up West Michigan. So many places raise up Ottawa County as a faithful portion of the kingdom of God. How did we get to 39%? For too long, we've been focused on maintaining the church. Maintaining what happens within these walls. Providing a service and providing an opportunity for those already here. We did one thing. And we did that one thing at the expense of what Christ commanded us to do. You see, we were never called to only worship. We are called to worship and we are called to discipleship. Say that with me. We are called to worship and we are called to discipleship. We're not called to one or the other. We are called to both and. But what would hold us back? Selfishness. We like what we have, we want to keep it just for us, and we really don't care about anyone who's not here yet. And the disciples found themselves in that moment. The resurrected Christ was spending time with them, and they believed, yes, now we've got Jesus back, and now we're going to be able to do life the way we want to do life just for us. I'm in Acts chapter 1 at verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, they asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his authority. You see, the very narrow, the very small, the very selfish picture in that moment was Jesus, we have you here with us for right now. Are we now going to do what we've been talking about just for us? 
Jesus said, don't worry about that. That's not for you to know. That's not for you to worry about. What are you supposed to do? You go be my witness. You go share. You go tell. You go invite. You go explain. Church, it's a brand new year. But it's the same opportunity that's always been in front of us. And I sure would like to know who's going to serve on the home team. Because if you're not serving on the home team, honestly, I'm not sure whose team you're on. Let's serve him well together. Amen? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you that the plan hasn't changed. Thank you that your word hasn't changed. Holy Spirit, thank you. You have not lost any power, but there are still so many in this world who are lost. So this morning, in the start of a brand new year, help us to be disciples who make disciples Father God, obviously worshiping you and bringing you glory and honor and praise together on the Lord's day, but with every other breath and every other ability, reaching this world the rest of the week until all those you so love are safely brought home. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, if you're able to stand, would you please do so? Holy, 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 Savior, King. It is one thing to sing it. It's another thing to believe it. It's a whole other thing to share it with others. Let's do that today, this week. Let's do this as long as God gives us the gift of life. And as you serve him well, may you always know the love of God our Father, the fellowship and strength of the Holy Spirit, and the amazing grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is all God's people say. Amen.
God bless you. Have a wonderful week.